Yes, there are many demons in our lives. In addition to the ones I have touched on, there is the demon of suspicion, the demon of jealousy, the demon of self-pity, the demon of religious piety, and many, many more demons that I could spend hours just naming. The word legion could mean anywhere from 4,500 to 6,000 people. And you know what? I'm just betting we could come pretty close to that number of demons within our own lives. And when these demons take control of our lives, the one thing you can be sure of is that our relationships will suffer from them. When I give myself over to jealousy or resentment or fear or religious piety, the bond of love that should have existed between me and someone else is damaged. But God is in the business of damage control. God restores the relationships that have been broken. And generally, it seems to be simply with the use of a mirror. For when we stand in the presence of God, we tend to see things as they really are without all the smoke screens and illusions to which we have become accustomed. We recognize fear as a prison instead of safety. We recognize entitlement as greed instead of some kind of reward for hard work. We see ourselves as others see us instead of how we had thought we were portraying ourselves. We see things as they really are. And if there's one thing that our demons or character flaws or whatever you want to call them can't bear, it's the mirror of truth. And so in the language of 12-step programs, we come to realize that our lives have become unmanageable, and we realize that God can restore us from our feelings of insanity, and we make a decision to turn our lives and these things over to God, and then we begin to get honest with ourselves doing what we can to make amends where necessary. In Sunday morning church speak, we do it during communion, or at least we go through the motions of it. We recognize God as the divine holder of the mirror of truth. We ask God to hold it before our eyes and then we confess what we see. We call out the demons that we are able to recognize in our lives. And then we ask for God's grace to work in our lives and remove anything that may block us from right relationship with God and with others. And finally, we come to the table as a community of believers who have been restored. This morning's text used the word healed. The demon-possessed man was healed, it says. Other translations say saved. I like the word restored because it doesn't have all the church speak baggage that is attached to the other two words. But even after the restoration, the man still felt the influence of the grass is always greener on the other side demon he read we read that he begged Jesus to allow him to accompany him any place other than this town of small-minded rednecks Jesus but Jesus would have none of it when our relationships are restored we don't walk away from them we continue in them and grow in them, and so Jesus told him to return home. It was an act of compassion that Jesus performed, this restoration of a man's relationship with his community. But it wasn't without pain. 
we pray for God to restore our relationships with others, with the parents who refuse to embrace our sexual orientation, with the spouse who has lost the ability to trust us, with the loved ones who have suffered most from our addictions. We ask for restored relationships, but without all the pain and the tears that go along with it. But unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. It takes time and prayer and messing up and starting over again. And it takes God's grace. God's grace accepts us in all of our humanness. God loves us through it all. The reflection we see in the mirror of truth may look hideous to us, but it's a beautiful sight to God. Just accept it. Try to accept the miracle and beauty of God's love, a God who loves us all just as we are. Amen.